Hello, Mr. Zonka here, and this video is on the laws of exponents. Hopefully you've heard of exponents before. Our exponent refers to that little number above a base, and basically the exponent or power is the amount of times the number is multiplied by itself. I've got the power. So when we evaluate exponents like these, seven squared, we basically take that base of seven and multiply it two times, because that's the exponent. And that would be seven times seven, which is 49. Likewise, four to the fourth power would be four times four times four times four, which is 256. Let's multiply our knowledge of exponents by covering multiplication. When multiplying exponents with the same base, we can add the exponents. Let's take a look at this one. We've got seven squared times seven to the first power. Seven squared is seven times seven. Seven to the first is times another seven. And then we've got a total of two plus one or one, two, three as our exponent. So this would evaluate to seven to the third power. How about example two? Five to the third power, five times five times five times five to the second power, times another two fives, will give us a total of three plus two, or one, two, three, four, five. So we have five to the fifth power. Let's further divide these laws of exponents by going over division. When dividing exponents with the same base, we can subtract the exponents. The base and exponent will be left in the bigger of the numerator or the denominator. Before we get back to these examples here, I want to take a side note here by going over this seven to the third over seven to the first. Here we have seven times seven times seven, seven to the third, divided by seven to the first. Now all I did here was take one of these sevens and match them up because we know that anything divided by itself is one. So this, uh, this guy right here, whoop, this is kind of like that giant one that we might be talking about a little bit in class. So that seven and that seven becomes a one, leaving us with just those two sevens left over because when we multiply anything by one, it doesn't really change it. So looking at these examples here, we've got that seven to the third, which is seven times seven times seven, divided by that seven to the first, which is just seven. And in our minds, we can see how if we group one of those sevens together, seven divided by seven, it's gonna cancel out, become a one, leaving us with just these two sevens remaining. That would be a seven squared. Looking at this five squared, we have five times five, divided by the five to the fifth power, five times five times five times five times five. And this time we have two of those fives, five divided by five would be one. Another five divided by five would be one, leaving us with just three fives in the denominator. So we would have one over five to the third. Notice that our shortcut of subtraction could have helped us skip this expanding part. Three minus one would be two. 5 minus 2 would be 3, but the bigger number's in the bottom, giving us that 1 over 5 to the third. You're going to feel very powerful when you master this next one, powers of powers. When there is a power of a power, we can multiply the exponents. Let's take a look at why. Here we've got 7 squared, but we have that to the third power. That means we've got 7 squared times 7 squared times 7 squared three different times, and that's three groups of two. Three times two would give us an exponent of six. So that would be seven to the sixth. Over here, we've got five to the fourth to the exponent of two. That would give us five to the fourth times five to the fourth. That's two groups of four. Two times four is eight, leaving us with a five to the eighth power. Okay, don't be negative, but we have a couple more laws to cover. Negative exponents. When an exponent is negative, we can flip it to the opposite side of the fraction 
and make it a positive. This is because a negative exponent is like dividing the base instead of multiplying. So when we have seven to the negative two power, that's like we were dividing by seven twice. So we'd write one over seven to the positive two. Here we have one over five to the negative three. That would be as if we had in the denominator dividing by five three times, which is meaning we're gonna flip that over to the numerator, giving us a five to the third power positive over one, which when we have anything over one, we don't really need it. Need it. So this one over five to the negative three flips to become five to the positive three. This last law makes zero sense at first, but it makes perfect sense once we think about it a little more. Exponents of zero. When there is an exponent of zero, the value is always one. This is because the number being multiplied and divided is the same. For example, if we had seven squared over seven squared, seven squared divided by seven squared is one, but using our subtraction rule, that would be two minus two, which would be seven to the zero. So since we need everything to be equal, we make anything to the zero power one. Looking at these examples here, seven to the zero power is gonna be one, and five to the zero power is also one. All right, everyone, I hope this video was helpful.